Dear friends, welcome to the little patio courtyard garden here at St. Clement's and to this wee reflection for Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. We watch Jesus organize his own entry into the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was famous as a, a city of beauty. It was also famous as a city of brutality. And yet Jesus, it seems he's got something in his head compass fixed on this place. He has to go there. He has to go there. And amid all the shouting and chanting and hallelujahs, Matthew says, people ask, who is this man? And others explain to him, it's Jesus of Nazareth from up in Galilee. And you see the northerner come south. You see the countryman come to the city. You see the prophet come to confront the religious authorities. If you look at this colourful fresco, the Byzantine style, of the entrance into Jerusalem, um, you see a peaceful procession. In spite of all the excitement, this is serious business. The poet Clive Sanson tries to catch this as he imagines the owner of the donkey who yesterday saw Pilate come bouncing along the same road armour shining, half of Rome trotting behind. He says, then today, him and my, my little donkey, ha, laugh. I thought I'd kill myself when he first started. So did the rest of them. Gave him a cheer, like he was Caesar himself, only more hearty. Tore off some palm twigs and followed shouting, whacking the donkeys behind. Then suddenly we see his face. The smile had gone. And somehow the way he sat was different. Like he was much older, didn't want to laugh anymore. In the Palm Sunday procession, Jesus leads the way. This procession goes into another one where now Jesus is led away and handed over to the soldiers. By the time the passion gets underway, dear friends, there's nothing, there's nothing to shout about. Processions that follow Messiah are colourful, loud, interesting. Processions that follow a condemned criminal a pretty shabby affairs. Most of the people involved are soldiers or onlookers. There's always plenty of onlookers. Matthew tells us that the disciples have all abandoned him by now. One betrayed him with a kiss. Another denied him to a little girl who opens doors in the dark. If you look at the second procession, at this still from the film, The Passion of the Christ, we've moved from colour to grey. When the passion begins, it brings its own pressing question. Can you still attach yourself to this man when all the authorities are ranged against him? Can you still believe in Jesus? when he's facing the direction of Golgotha. Jesus himself presses on to the end. When we speak of the passion of Jesus, we usually mean the suffering and death inflicted on him. But the passion is not just something that's done to Jesus by others. It's a power within Jesus. It's his passion one that consumes his whole person and drives him through this time of horror. He could have avoided coming south to Jerusalem. He could have compromised 
and secured his survival. But the passion that is in him is grander than his need of security. He is a passionate man. His ardent love insists that he faces the ultimate test of the cross. Throughout his ministry, Jesus has revealed the reaches of his passion, his preference for those who are abandoned, for the little people, for the people who are overlooked, who never get invited anywhere, for those who live in anxiety or poverty. His anger at the religious authorities I don't know, their chief talent seems to be inventing new burdens for people without lifting a finger to help them. The wonderful image of the wheat pressed down but still flowing over. His way of having jars of plenty. His passionate attachment to those even who deserted him. Dear friends, all this does not emerge from a man who is timid or frugal in his ways. In the end, the cross comes as no surprise. It's a penalty for making a habit of such extravagant love. If you look at the central panel of this famous Eisenheim altarpiece, everything is in the hands when you look. The cross of Jesus stands at the centre of the Christian story. It's a sign of the love, the lengths that love will go to in its passion for others. If we ever wonder if we really loved, we should look at this figure on the cross. It's difficult to maintain that we are unloved when we know that someone thought we were worth dying for. The cross is lifted up as a sign of our worth. Somebody thought that we were worth all that pain and suffering and that somebody is Jesus our Lord. We remember the death of Jesus not as a heedless act of violence. We honour his death as a supreme act of love. Dear friends, we celebrate the one who did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself and became as all men are, and yet even humbler, in spite of our compulsions and stupidities, in spite of our fragilities and sins, God loves us. God loves us. That is the heart of the passion story. All else, all else is commentary. Thank you.